Hey everyone, today I'm going to break down a financial aid award letter for you. It's almost that time of year where financial aid offers are going to begin rolling out and all the information put in those financial aid offers can be really confusing. So I'm going to take you step by step through a financial aid offer. If you like what I have to say, be sure to subscribe by clicking the link below. Let me just share my screen and we'll get started. So here I have an example of what a financial aid offer might look like when it comes to you. Typically these get mailed out via email or the student will get an email notification saying that their financial aid offer is ready to review and they can log into their account at the college to review it. So when you get a financial aid offer, it's going to be broken down usually by direct costs and indirect costs, along with giving you a total cost of attendance of the college. So in this particular situation, the first thing that you see outlined are the direct costs, which are costs that the student are 100% going to have. Fees that are associated with every college, the tuition, which is the amount of money it's going to, talk, to cost the student to take full-time classes. These fees can vary. And what you'll notice is the award is broken down into two different semesters, the fall semester and spring semester. Then below the direct costs, you'll see indirect costs. So these are costs that are kind of, some of these are estimated while others could be considered a direct cost. And what I mean by that, you'll see there's a budget in here for books of $747 each semester. Books could cost more or less than that. There's also some travel related costs for almost $1,400 a semester that they're putting into the student's budget. It might not cost that much money each semester for the student to travel. And that's more of an indirect cost, something that you'll probably be paying out of pocket so you don't necessarily have to put that into the total bottom line right now. There's also some miscellaneous expenses which could include a variety of things such as incidentals for the students living on campus or maybe some separate fees associated with their particular degree program. And you can see here that these miscellaneous expenses are estimated to be about $1,800 or $3,500 for the whole year. Again, these are indirect costs and something that the college is estimating and just building into their budget. But if this includes any incidental expenses, this is something that the student will likely be taken care of while they're living on campus, either with you know, their own paycheck from a work study uh, plan that they're on, or maybe as a parent, you'll be sending students money to help them with incidentals. So again, this miscellaneous expense is something that you don't necessarily have to figure as like a direct cost. You can kind of take it out of the equation for now. Room and board, however, even though they're listed as indirect, they're for any student living on campus, it's going to be more of a direct cost. This college breaks it down by the board plan, which is going to be the meal plan. This one's probably three meals a day. With board, you have the option of doing like one meal a day, two meals a day, or three meals a day, which is going to change the cost of what board is. And then room would be the dorm charges. So between room and board at this particular college, it's about $13,000 for the year. So if I was working with a family and helping them break down the financial aid offer, the first thing I would have them do is take into consideration these direct costs. So $25,000 that you see here, then add in the room and board because that's a given if the student's going to be living on campus, which is about $13,000. So if you add that to the 25, that brings it to about $38,000. In terms of these other expenses, there's about seven to $8,000 in indirect costs for travel and books and incidentals. You can kind of leave that out of the equation if you know in your head, you know that paying for books is going to be an out-of-pocket cost. The students travel along with, you know, miscellaneous incidental expenses. So if we took these out of the initial equation, then what you're looking at is needing to come up with for these direct costs, including room and board, is about $38,000 for the year. So the college will always start off with like what their budget is, what the costs are, and then usually give you the total cost of attendance of the college. In this particular case, um, at least not right here, I'm not seeing a cost of attendance. Some colleges will give it and some colleges won't. And the cost of attendance would be, you know, the total cost to, to live on campus, which usually includes the budget of indirect and direct costs. So again, 
in looking at this award letter, you can think about needing about $38,000 as a definite right off the bat. So then as you move down into the actual financial aid award, the first thing colleges always do is list institutional scholarship money. So this would be need-based aid, merit-based aid that the student is eligible for. In this particular case, the student was awarded a champion award, and they also received an award for depositing early, which some colleges do offer, which is a nice little note. You might want to check and see if, if the colleges that your student or that you're applying to as a student um, offer this. It could be a couple extra thousand dollars in your pocket. New student book dollars, this is just kind of a credit this particular college is giving the student each semester for their books. And then the Liberty Academic and the is going to be the merit scholarship outlined each semester. In this particular case, it's about $6,500. Merit scholarships can vary significantly from college to college. They can be anywhere from a few thousand dollars. I've seen them all the way up to like $30,000 a year. It just depends on where the student falls with their GPA and test scores and how much merit scholarship money the colleges have to offer. So then they are going to give you a total of the institutional scholarship money, which is just under $16,000 for the year. Then they're going to move into other financial aid offer. Uh, other financial aid offer. Now, if the student was eligible for like federal Pell Grants or grants as a result of filling out the FAFSA form based on income, that would typically be listed next and it would say federal Pell Grant and it would outline the amount of money they're getting, maybe a federal SEOG grant or a state grant. Those are all need-based grants considered uh, that the students considered for by filling out the FAFSA form. So free money, scholarship money is always listed first. Then they move into the federal loans. Every single student applying to college is going to get a federal direct student loan awarded in their own name, whether they are dependent or independent. The amounts that dependent students can get, which are those students who need to provide parent information on the FAFSA, are $5,500 for their first year, $6,500 for their second year, and $7,500 for their third and fourth year. And the nice thing about these federal direct loans is that they're not based on credit. So this is a guaranteed loan the student is going to get, and it's a great way for them to have some skin in the game if they are going to borrow any type of loan. It is low interest. It does not come due until six months after graduation, so it's a good loan for them to borrow. What you will notice is a subsidized, what you may notice, not everybody, a subsidized loan and an unsubsidized loan. These are both part of the federal direct uh, loan program. The big difference between the two, the subsidized loan is considered a need, it's need-based financial aid, even though it is a loan, because the government will pay the interest that accrues on it while the student is in school. But the maximum subsidized loan that any student can get is about $3,500, whereas the direct unsubsidized loan, the student is responsible for paying that interest while it accrues when the student is in school. But the total between these two amounts is $5,500. Now, of course, students don't have to accept their loans, but if they're going to borrow any money, this should be the loan that they borrow first before looking at any kind of private education loan or Parent PLUS loan or anything like that. So this particular student is getting a federal loan uh, for $5,500. Then it outlines federal work study. And what you'll notice on this financial aid offer is in parentheses, it says not deducted from bill. And the reason they say this, because this particular student is getting an award of $2,500 each semester, which is $5,000 for the whole year. But you can't plan on this money going directly towards their tuition unless they plan on getting a work study job, earning that amount of money each semester, and they will be putting that money towards their tuition at the school. So with federal work study, when students get this award, it simply means that they can get a work study job on campus and they can earn no more than the $2,500 for each semester. But keep in mind, they have to earn that all in order for them to be able to say, in order for you as a family to say, okay, you know, my son or daughter is gonna work this job and put it all towards their tuition. They have to make sure they're earning that total amount of money for the semester. 
Work study jobs are flexible. Students can pick and choose their own hours. And what most students do with work study funds is use that money as a, in the form of a paycheck for incidentals when they're living on campus. So for federal work study, don't count that towards the bottom line or going towards the bill unless you know 100% for sure the student is going to take that money that they earn from work study and put it directly to their student account. So this gives in a total award. So what it does, it takes the scholarship money, the federal direct loan and the federal work study, and it gives a direct uh, total award of about $26,000. So what I would do in this situation when I'm advising a family is I'd, I'd take out that federal work study award right off the bat because you're not sure if the student's gonna earn it or if they do, maybe they're gonna use it for incidentals. So I would subtract that from the $26,000, which, which would tell you that the student is eligible for about $21,000. So just under 16,000 in the scholarship money and about $5,000 in their student loan. And remember when we were looking up top at these direct and indirect costs, and we were just counting the tuition and fees and the room and board, but remember that was about $38,000. So if you subtract the scholarship money and the federal direct loan of $21,000, that's going to leave an out-of-pocket cost of about $17,000 that the student is going to be responsible for and that they have to pay on top of any books and incidental expenses that we remember we took out of the equation in travel and things like that. So it's important when you're looking at a financial aid offer that you're understanding what direct cost means, what indirect cost means. These are all of the numbers that colleges use to actually create what's called a cost of attendance budget and then award student financial aid. So the nice thing is this particular um, college's cost of attendance budget would be the 25,000 plus the 20,000. So it would be about $55,000 for the student to attend school. So what that means, if you take away the $21,000 in financial aid that we just went over, the scholarship money that was a little less than 16 and the federal direct loan of about $5,500. And you subtract that $21,000 from the total cost of attendance, which is $55,000, that's going to leave about $34,000 left over that the student technically could borrow through a private education loan if needed, or the parent could borrow through a federal parent plus loans loan. Those loans are intended for students and parents to borrow the total financial aid gap. But remember that $34,000 is not necessarily what you would need to borrow. And I would highly caution you against doing that because that's a lot of money. Because if you're not taking the books, travel and miscellaneous expenses into consideration, remember those direct costs were about $38,000 plus they're getting the $21,000 in financial aid. So really you just need like about $17,000 to pay that financial aid gap, keeping in mind that books and travel and incidentals would be out of pocket. And then when you have that financial aid gap, I have other videos on my YouTube channel that you can refer to about closing options for closing the financial aid gap. My recommendation would be always first and foremost to set up a payment plan directly with the college over the course of the school year prior to borrowing any type of loan. Most colleges will set up a payment plan of, and I'm just going to stop sharing this so I can chat with you. So most colleges will set up a payment plan of anywhere from nine to 10 months over the course of a school year. So as a family, figure out what you can pay out of pocket through this payment plan and do that first. So let's say you could pay $7,000 out of pocket. That $17,000 gap I was just talking to you about would go down to about $10,000. Then if you need to borrow loan money through a private loan or a Parent PLUS loan, borrow that $10,000. So I just wanted to break down a financial aid offer for you to kind of explain to you how it all works. It can be really confusing when you're seeing all these different sources of aid and direct costs and indirect costs and understanding what it all means. I hope that is helpful to all of you. And as these financial aid offers come out, remember you can appeal your financial aid offer. There's two different kinds of financial aid appeals. One is called a special circumstances appeal. If your family has unique circumstances, such as an inflated 2020, 
2020 adjusted gross income due to a retirement distribution or something like that, or your 2021 income is going to be less than 2020, or you have significant medical or dental expenses or anything like that financially, you can appeal that financial aid offer or notify the financial aid office about these special circumstances and they can recalculate your expected family contribution based on this new information. If special circumstances don't apply to you, you can still appeal your financial aid offer and humbly ask the college for additional financial aid. 80% of students who appeal their financial aid offers will receive additional monies. And this does not just apply to students who have special circumstances. I help families go through this financial aid appeal process all the time. And anybody can write a financial aid appeal letter or contact the financial aid office and ask them about their appeal process. But if you find that you need assistance with that and uh, you would like me to help you, I offer a couple of services that can help. I offer a digital course, which is a step-by-step -step webinar that will guide you through appealing your financial aid offer help you draft the letter, and then you can actually email the letter directly to me for review and feedback prior to submitting it. Or you can do schedule a one-on-one -on -one, uh, financial aid appeal consultation with me, and I'll actually help you draft the financial aid appeal letter. I've worked in the financial aid office, in the financial aid field, I should say, for over 30 years. And a number of those years, I spent working directly in the financial aid office, actually reading financial aid appeal letters. So I know what financial aid administrators are looking for. There's an effective way to write those letters. And then lastly, if anybody's watching this who has a rising high school senior that will be graduating in 2023, be sure to check out my Financial Aid Academy. Enrollment just opened for that program. It's a step-by-step -step program that will take you month by month through the entire senior year financial aid process and help guide you through it and educate you, take the stress out of it for you and help you maximize those financial aid offers. Both of these programs you can find directly on my website, thefafsaguru.com and just click on program, programs and you can navigate there and learn more information about them. Thanks so much for watching everybody. I hope this helps.